step back in time to 1957 with a cinematic gem that has stood the test of time and a fair to remember. This classic Hollywood film, featuring an ensemble cast led by some of the industry's icons, weaves a tale of love, laughter, and heartbreak. But what makes this movie endure through the ages? What enduring qualities do you think make this film an everlasting symbol of the industry? As you delve into the narrative, be prepared for a roller coaster of emotions. There are surprising, amusing, and poignant moments that will keep you hooked till the credits roll. Which classic Hollywood actor in this movie was your favorite? Before we dive into the many funny, shocking, and sad facts about an affair to remember, we want to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this timeless film? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. So sit back, relax, and let the magic of an affair to remember unfold. And remember, stay tuned for those fascinating facts. In the 1957 film An Affair to Remember, viewers are immersed in the story of Nikki Ferrante, a charming philanderer played by Grant, and Terry McKay, an American nightclub singer portrayed by Carr. The two characters, despite their undeniable chemistry, find themselves entangled with other lovers. As the transatlantic luxury liner carries them from Naples back to New York, they make a promise if both are free in six months, they will reunite at the top of the Empire State Building, a symbolic meeting point for them. However, fate takes an unexpected turn when, on the day of the reunion, Terry, involved in a serious accident, is unable to fulfill her part of the promise. Unaware of the truth, Nikki succumbs to cynicism. The film, directed by Leo McCary, unfolds with Oscar-nominated performances, showcasing attractive settings like the French Riviera and the emotional journey of two beautiful individuals seeking love and fulfillment. The narrative, though at times considered hokey, resonates strongly with those inclined toward romantic tales. The movie's impact is so profound that some viewers might find themselves reaching for a box of tissues, especially during poignant moments accompanied by Vic Damon's rendition of the title song. As a side note, it's interesting to discover that in an affair to remember, Marnie Nixon, known for her dubbing work, lent her vocal talents for Deborah Carr's singing. This revelation adds a layer of appreciation for the film's musical elements. In the climactic scene, emotions run high as Nikki, played by Grant, confronts the unexpected challenges that Terry, portrayed by Carr, faces. The tension builds as they grapple with the realization that their reunion has taken an unforeseen turn. The conclusion, with the backdrop of falling snow and romantic lines sung by the studio chorus, leaves a lasting impression on the audience. In summary, the movie weaves a compelling narrative of love, promises, and unforeseen obstacles, making it a classic in the romantic film genre. The performances, coupled with the emotional depth of the storyline, create an enduring cinematic experience for viewers. In Leo McCary's film, actors took the liberty to improvise, adding their own lines to the final cut. Notably, Deborah Carr's singing was dubbed by Marnie Nixon, who also provided her voice in The King and I the previous year. Most of the filming took place in Hollywood, with occasional shoots in New York City and the south of France. Interestingly, Kathleen Nesbitt clarified that despite her scenes appearing to be in France, they were shot on the 20th Century Fox backlot. So, the movie showcases the spontaneous creativity of its actors and the strategic use of locations to achieve its desired effect. It's a glimpse into the filmmaking process where on-screen appearances can be deceiving, offering viewers a unique perspective on the movie-making magic. In Cary Grant's rare foray into product endorsement, he candidly promoted TWA, his preferred airline, to boost the film's visibility. This marked a departure from his usual avoidance of such promotions. The movie, one of three collaborations between Grant and Deborah Carr, secured a spot among the nominees for the Top 100 Greatest American Movies by the American Film Institute in 1998. The recognition attests to its enduring impact and significance in American cinema. Grant's honest endorsement and the Carr-Grant pairing contributed to the film's success, placing it in the annals of American cinematic history. Deborah Carr takes on the role of Terry McKay in the 1957 film, stepping into the shoes previously filled by Irene Dunn in the 1939 movie Love Affair. Directed by Leo McCary, this film serves as a remake of its predecessor. Carr, no stranger to McCary's direction, had portrayed Anna Leon Owens in The King and I, a character previously brought to life by Irene Dunn in the 1946 classic Anna and the King of Siam. 
Notably, both films share a common source originating from the same book. The musical score of the film is marked by the persistence of composer Harry Warren, who experimented with 25 melodies before finding the right tune for a pivotal piano piece. This dedication underscores the meticulous craftsmanship behind the film's soundtrack. In a behind-the-scenes anecdote, Cary Grant, cast in a rare product endorsement for TWA, faced a personal challenge during filming. Grant's wife, Betsy Drake, enlisted the help of a hypnotist to assist him in overcoming his smoking habit. Additionally, she provided him with a health-conscious lunch, addressing his increased hunger resulting from the absence of cigarettes. These details, woven into the fabric of an affair to remember, illuminate the complexities and efforts involved in its creation. The film's history intertwines with previous works, the perseverance of its composer, and the personal challenges faced by one of its stars. Such insights offer a glimpse into the practicalities and intricacies of the cinematic process, showcasing the collaborative efforts that culminate in the magic of storytelling on the big screen. Cary Grant, a smoker since 1911, quit his 60-a-day cigarette habit while filming. Despite occasional cigarettes later, he maintained this decision for several more years. At 53, Grant was only 15 years younger than Kathleen Nesbitt, who portrayed his grandmother. The film unfolds on the SS Constitution, commissioned in 1951, sailing the New York, Genoa, Naples, and Gibraltar route. The ship, alongside its sister SS Independence, marked post-WW2 ocean liner fame. Grace Kelly chose it for her wedding journey, and I Love Lucy showcased the ship during their European trip. Cary Grant, an avid supporter of TWA, broke his usual avoidance of product endorsements for the film, candidly promoting the airline. The movie, recognized among the top 100 greatest American movies, attests to its enduring impact in American cinema. The Carr-Grant collaboration and Grant's genuine endorsement contributed to its success, securing a place in cinematic history. Cary Grant's personal challenge during filming involved overcoming a smoking habit, supported by his wife, Betsy Drake. He navigated this challenge while enjoying a health-conscious lunch due to increased hunger from the absence of cigarettes. These personal details, woven into the film's fabric, shed light on the intricacies and efforts involved in its creation. The movie captures spontaneous actor improvisations and strategic location use, offering viewers a unique behind-the-scenes perspective. Its connection to previous works, composer Harry Warren's dedication, and personal challenges faced by the stars enrich the narrative, showcasing collaborative efforts in the magic of storytelling on the big screen. In the 50th anniversary DVD release, a Moviaton news piece captures the shipboard premiere of the film aboard the SS Constitution, the actual location for filming. The newsreel sheds light on the unique setting chosen for the movie's debut. Originally, Ingrid Bergman was the top pick for the role of Terry McKay, with Doris Day also considered before Deborah Carr secured the part. Carr's portrayal brought a distinct touch to the character, adding another layer to the film's narrative. Nicky Ferrante endearingly refers to his grandmother as Janu, a term closely resembling Mamu or Manu, commonly used by Southern French people for their grandmothers. The significance of this choice adds a cultural nuance to the character, providing depth to the familial connections within the storyline. These behind-the-scenes insights from the unconventional shipboard premiere to the casting choices and cultural nuances contribute to the film's unique charm. Each detail enriches the narrative, creating a tapestry of experiences woven into the fabric of an affair to remember. It's a captivating journey into the making of the film, offering viewers a different perspective on the movie's history and characters. Cary Grant faced a unique challenge during the filming of this classic. Cinematographer Milton R. Krasner pointed out a lump on Grant's forehead, affecting close-up shots. Grant, habitually rubbing it for years, took a brief hiatus. He had the lump removed in a doctor's office under local anesthesia, recovering within days thanks to his wife Betsy Drake's hypnotic assistance. The movie's spontaneity extends beyond medical anecdotes. Deborah Carr and Cary Grant, in their roles, improvised numerous scenes. Their unscripted moments contributed lines that made it into the final cut, showcasing the actor's creativity and the fluid nature of the filmmaking process. Originally titled Love Affair, the film is a remake directed by Leo McCary, who also helmed the 1939 version. McCary's direction sets the stage for the chemistry between Carr and Grant, allowing for organic scenes that go beyond the script. 
This behind-the-scenes dynamic adds depth to the on-screen chemistry, providing a glimpse into the collaborative effort behind the camera. In summary, the filming of this cinematic gem saw Cary Grant overcoming a physical obstacle, while Carr and Grant's improvisations enriched the narrative. The film's journey, from its original title to McCary's direction, offers insights into the intricacies that shaped this enduring piece of cinema.